but everyone we have is a theater school graduate, and so, I mean, where was I when I was 24 years old? You know, these guys carry the show, and they're phenomenal. There's no way I could have done what they do at the age. In terms of technique, or stamina, or intelligence, or um, Creative genius. Allowing, believing in their genius. Believing in their ability to tell a story. Uh, I never would have had the courage that they have. There's no way. I mean, I would have done it differently. You know what, Robert? I would have been... Wait a minute. Well, a I minute. think they've been empowered to obey their inner instincts. I don't think I would have trusted my instincts, nor have been as empowered in the top-down kind of direction that we used to get. I don't think I would have... Um, or maybe, I, maybe I was just my own worst enemy and would never have, have empowered myself enough. Because I love how they... They just... Yeah, but wait a minute. No matter what you do, however brilliant or struggling, you're a powerful performer. No matter what you do. I mean, that's partly why Fiona's been on these stages all these years, because whatever happens, you will get a powerful performance up mm. there. Whether Fiona thinks it's the best thing she's mm. done or not, it's another question. Mm. But you always bring a power to it. Maybe. I mean, even when we did Ashes in that little place, whatever, there was a power that was going on in the midst of that drastically painful story about trying to have children. And I don't, I'll never forget that. No. You know, yes, the show didn't work here, and then it worked over there, but then it worked over here. But I don't forget the kind of power and energy that came out that I didn't see in Jeff, and Jeff was very great at it, and Maya was very great at it, but I didn't see it, but I felt it from you. Well, hey, let me tell you something. When I first went to the Banff School of Fine Arts, <clears throat> back when they used to give acting lessons, I used to go, I was at McGill during the year, and I went to Banff in the summers, and my first acting class with this teacher, uh, and I, I think his name was Robert, Jim McQueen, not Robert McQueen, who's the great musical director here um, in Toronto. Uh, anyway, um, Jim McQueen, we did a, a, an acting exercise where we were all crawling around in the dark, and he commented on quite a few people, but he didn't comment on me. I chased him all the way to the front desk of the bench. I said, Mr. McQueen, Mr. McQueen, you didn't comment on me. And he looked at me and said, oh, you're way too intense. <laughs> so a lot of that was just, I was really intense. And you know, you encountered that. I was confrontational in a way. That's like gold on stage, Fiona. Mm, not if you're not, there's a point where you need calm. I, look, uh, I tell you, I sometimes think the trajectory of my... I was funny and I didn't know why I was funny. And I, I loved laughter. And then do you remember Errol Slew, that great actor, who was um, an actor of color who wanted the inclusivity that we're, we're doing, we're searching for now. And he was way ahead of his time. He died of a heart attack at the age of 45. I revered him so much. We did a Tom Stoppard night and day together and he said, you're very good at judging laughter. He said, you don't judge an audience's silence. He said, you need to learn how to gain the silence as much as the laughter. And that was transformative for me because he was an actor who could do that. And he used to say, I don't want to be brought in on ethnic day. I want to be brought in for all the leading parts. I mean, he was such a gifted actor and he left us too soon. But, the, the, you know, now, we, now we're trying to, bring so many people up because we didn't permit them to tell their stories 30 and 40 years ago. That, anyway, that's another topic, isn't it? But it's an important one.